Okay, so I'm going to kind of show you what I do. First, I want to credit Lisa Bonjing. She's the one that taught me. We have a link to the um, video that she taught it to me like five or six years ago. It's amazing. This is what I do. First, you should not pre you should not starch pre-cuts because they will shrink. So um, I wouldn't if I was working on a pre-cut. When I say pre-cut, I mean layer cake, charm pack, or jelly roll because they're going to shrink. Now, if your pattern will work with that shrinkage, that's okay. Everything is gonna shrink about half an inch. It's gonna shrink in one direction, not both directions. So you just decide what works for you. Um, you should starch the back and the binding if you start to the front. I don't always do that, but um, really when you're quilting or sewing or crafting, do whatever you wanna do. Like, And don't feel like you have to do this. If you don't wanna starch, don't starch. I'm just showing you what I do, but you don't have to. Um, this is just, I really want my blocks to be perfect. So the first thing that I do is in my drawers at home, like my drawers, like my, what do you call them? Drawers. drawers. Yeah. So I got these boxes like two years ago or a year ago at Target. They're just square boxes and they happen to fit my drawers. And what I do is in the back of the drawer, I have my unstarched fabric. And in the front of the drawer, I have my starch. So this is the fabric. This is Vintage Happy 2, which is also in the quilt behind me. And I am using this on the Sherry McConnell 2020 free block of the month. So I've used these fabrics because I've starched them. So I don't starch. I like to, I do like to starch everything at the beginning of a project, but I've been so busy, I haven't been able to. So I'm going to show you how I starch. And then what I do um, after it's starched is it goes in the starch bucket. So that if I w I'm gonna use these and the remaining blocks, but I always keep my starched and my unstarched separate. That's just something that I do. I mean, you can feel it and tell, but it's what I do. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this half yard. And to starch, I'll show you how I starch. So I will leave it together. Okay, I have a Amazon link to what I use. It is really hard to find where I live. Um, it is, there's been a change in starch company. It's Niagara Original Hold. They also have a heavy hold or a, yeah, heavy, heavy, whatever. And it's in all the stores in Texas, but I think it's too heavy. So I actually have to, from the Amazon link below, that's where I purchase my starch because I cannot find it in stores. I wish that I could because um, it's really hard for me to find. So anyway, this is what I use. And what I do is I take a ironing board and I put a scrap fabric. So this could be like a leftover fabric or it could just be a Kona, but I don't change it except like every six months. So we just put a white here. So sometimes I use like leftover backing that comes back from the quilter. Um, we're just using white today so that um, it doesn't confuse you. But I just use scraps, whatever I have, but I don't change it very often. So I don't iron, I just take it straight off the bolt or however, and this is how I starch. So Lily can get kind of up close, but what I do is I'm gonna try to do it really fast because I do like it to be smooth. And if you start, if you start and stop, it kind of won't be smooth and you might get spots. So I'm gonna just kind of do it and then we'll talk through it. So I try to go very even and I go, I just, I guess you'll just have to watch what I do, but I, tr I go really fast and I never stop when I'm doing it because I don't want, like I said, if, if it gets uneven, you can get spots. Then I flip it and I do the other side. And I won't iron this until it is completely dry. Yes. It takes about eight hours to dry, four to eight hours to dry. I try to do this at night and then let it sit over um, overnight. So now it's all wet. And then what I do is I have this little drying rack. And I make sure it's even and I go like this and I let it dry. Now, um, a lot of you have said, um, you know, oh, and then I have a rug under it. So in my sewing room at home, I got these rugs off of Wayfair. Wayfair's a great place to get rugs for like 50 bucks. They're just cheap 
rugs. And that way nobody slips in the bathroom and this sits in a shower. It could sit out on a, it could sit on your rug. You could put towels down, but I would recommend just some cheap rug or bed bath and beyond. You know, they always have that 50% off coupon and I will just starch. Now it's going to shrink, but I'm going to have crisp results. And again, Lisa Bongino is the one that taught me this. Um, I do not wash 